Hi, Seiji here. I'll be talking about the frequent asked question about uh, the potential system that we just have in this update. So let's start with the basic. First of all, like the what is potential? So the potential system makes it so that it increases the the potential of his, a costume. So take for example, made Leatrice in this instant. You start off in the beginning with the small nodes right here. They're gonna be called the, the black nodes, black small nodes. Then you try to branch out by upgrading it to uh, meet the requirement, which you see these white nodes. These four white nodes in any costume will be your perma stats. And if you don't select them at all, you can see the stats on the right side. Perma stats are from the small four nodes. These, these perma stats will be applied to the character. So you can you pretty much as much as much perma stats you can from each costume. They will carry over to any costumes. While your bond stats right here, these are like the black nodes right here. The black nodes they only apply to this costumes, and specifically I'll get later on on the bond stat itself as well, but. If you upgrade, say in this instant, right? If you upgrade Leatrice costume and you see these big nodes right here, if you unlock all three of them, this will apply permanently to made Leatrice only. While, while the stats right here, these black stats right here, where you get defense, attack, and more attack with uh, crit damage right here, these value are gonna be your bond stat. And I'll get on later on with the bond stat. So now you see that you have your bond stats right here, right? This bond stat applies to the character itself. However, in order to select this specific bond stat, you have to go out of your costume and go into info. And on your top right, you get to select who, which, which costume you want the stats that you gain. So the reason why you want to unlock your bond stats is so that you can choose in between characters, in between the costume, which bond stats you want to apply so that these bond stats are going to be your extra like accessory or gear type of stats. And it's going to be, it's going to apply permanently to your whole character as a whole. So say I start off with zero right here and you see my lead just right here. This is the zero stats right here. But if I were to select the maid Leatrice, this is the stats that I unlock through her potential page and it will apply with it. So it will apply the crit damage, defense, and attack. And you see my stats increase. Now, now the main reason why you want to choose who to pick is you have to, you have to know which character you're going to pick out of the three, three or four costume or depending on how many costumes you have and you cater it towards your gear. So what happens is say like if I I pick Maid Leatrice here it, for for this uh, bond set of stats. Basically, it means that I'll get more crit damage and more attack. So it means that since the cap, uh, since the cap of the crit damage can only hit, hit up to 700, I can divert my sub stats to a little bit more attack. Or if if I switch to Neon Stalker right here in this case and I go for elemental uh, damage, it means that I won't get the uh, extra 40, 47% crit damage from the potential bond stats, meaning my gears and my sub stats are going to be catered to more crit damage value. So you have to know which which type of uh, characters you're gonna pick with the bond stats so you can apply appropriately and then gear your min, min max your gear according to this, the bond stat that you select. Now the good thing about this is that even though you have the bond stats here, right? The three big notes that you unlocked here, say like Neon Leatrice, the, the three big notes that you unlock it will permanently apply to this uh, Neon Leatrice skin already, costume already. And additionally with the four nodes right here, the four small nodes with the white background, it, it will be the perma stats that you can get as well. 
So in this case, you'll get more attack. While the the small black nodes, which which are like medium, these are gonna be your bond stats basically. Now to start off, in order to upgrade your skill tree, at first you're gonna we're gonna start with the base Leatrice. You start with a normal nodes where you can just upgrade with gold in the first two the first two will be upgraded with gold here I'll upgrade it here this is these two nodes again it's gonna go into your bond stat right here that you have to select in the in the info tab this specific bond stats will apply to it then afterward you use these currents right here so fire magic crystal you're gonna get it from path of adventure and I'm gonna showcase a run on the path of venture on on how you would attain this. Alright. Fire. So it's two, two per. So normal drops two. One to two, okay. Yeah, looking, looking like one to two. All right, there's boss as well. Four mobs and one boss. No, five mobs and one boss. Okay. So that's like around ten to twelve. Okay, so it doubles. 
Hard doubles at least. So at least four. I assume it's three to four. Okay, yep, three to four. Hi, Snowy. I'm just testing the run right now, uh, recording as well. Uh, it looks like. Oh, heart can drop t two as well. Damn. Okay. So normal drops one to two, hearts dropping around two to four. I think normal can drop three, but I haven't seen three. I saw two only. Should be a, yep, three. So three is the minimum here. How much is the boss? Show me the boss. Ah, oh, I should have seen. Oh, well. Let's just say hard is two to four. I wish I can change the the mode. <laughs> the difficulty is okay. It'll probably be some struggle for people, for sure. Okay, so very hard drops four at least. Please, like five or six. I could have swapped out Diana for Helena, probably. <laughs> Hell no, probably would have been a better choice, and I could have used pool party. No, actually, uh, Professor Sherza. That would probably be a better option here. But Leah just basically ignores this concept now. Just because how strong she is. I, I don't. There's no no drop boost for some reason okay at least five so there is a confirmation that's five i want to see a six yeah i checked the thing there is no drop boost at all hmm. very interesting shard farming again I feel like this should have been a 6, at least 6. Oh, still. 
before. Okay. So now I showed how to uh, get like the small adults right here with the fires, the magic crystal. These are the tier two. The big ones right here to unlock the bigger notes right here, they're gonna be the tier five. And how you're gonna get the tier goddess, you go to your thread shop. This is the first way. The first way is your thread shop right here. You can get three per month, and you should probably buy them because these are gonna be your heavily gated one. On top of that, uh, every event there's gonna be a three extra tier of goddess so you can pretty much buy them right here first one's gonna cost 1k second one's gonna be 2k and third one's gonna be 3k so you probably want to prioritize on buying them out first hopefully may maybe they'll add it to pvp shop and evil castle whenever they, they rework it but seems about now you get around like six to six a month if you do thread shop and the event if there's if it's like was it two events uh, a month then we can get at least max of uh, nine of these uh tier of goddess so how you get the magic crystal you're you're gonna be using these torch which which are the stamina equivalent currency of the cooked rice you can buy 10 a day, which is equivalent to 600 torch a day. And once you clear up to hard, very hard mode, you can pretty much auto. So yeah, you can change the difficulty and then just auto it. And if you don't unlock it, you have to clear starting from normal, hard, then very hard if you haven't unlocked it. So yeah, in this case, I'm only farming for fire. So yeah, you can see. And pretty much if you were to buy 600, 600 of these torch plus the 60 you should be able to get close to maxing out a character so yeah that's 2000 right there it would take about I would say 11 to 6 days 11 days if you get lucky 6 days with uh uh, was it 12 days with 720 torches should be enough for you to max out a character just from like a plain base I'm holding off these uh, fire shards uh, was it the magic magic crystals right now just to see on who I'm planning to max out for this upcoming update so how I would plan this right now just for Leatrice in general I will try to plan to get her Neon Stalker, the bond stats, at least unlock all the small nodes so I can get these stats right here so that she can get the attack and the fire damage. I will be building Leatrice around the fire damage, meaning I have to get more crit damage on my sub stats and maybe change my weapon as well. I would probably pick her as, as the frame for the bond. Then for my costume, obviously I am going to have to max out every single one. But at the current moment, I have the mate unlocked. Just, I should have not get the uh, SP re reduction by one. If I were to redo this again, I would just start from these, from the middle right here. And then was without going from left or right, I would just clear the, the middle itself. So I can unlock going up up to the uh, the middle node right here the middle big node so that she gets the the five tiles into the nine this is probably the huge advantage she has right now at the moment because the fact that she can hit nine tiles with the with her kit right now with the continuous damage if I have this proc then she'll deal additional additional damage to it so at the moment right now, um, who you should probably upgrade for your potential. I don't have a good grasp on like suggestion on who you should upgrade right now currently. If it was a support potential, obviously supports would have higher priority. But for now, which the DPS, right? If you're PvP focused, 
you can probably upgrade Seer or Elenir. But if you're like Fiend Hunt focus, this upcoming Fiend Hunt is going to be win, obviously. And judging from the kit, it's going to be defense with, with Magic Res being zero. We don't have a fire unit that is a mage, unfortunately. Maybe in the future we'll have. So because of this, in this situation, your choices are obviously going to be... Well, Diane's going to be first on your, your slot team, but units you can probably focus on upgrading for potential. Obviously, Maid Leatrice is going to be one of them. Yeah, we're gonna have to see to wait out on Ruby as well, the May Ruby's kit. Then your next choice would probably be I I personally think instead of Rubia, well we got to see Rubia's kit. Uh Elise is probably one of the good choice as well. The reason why is code Elise right here, I'm gonna show. Code is Elise, if you go to her costume other than the defense costume right here. The base doesn't really have a good modifier skill. It's just two. Was is the CDs reduced by two, which is really nice. But oh, actually, SP consumption reduced by one. That's fine. But then this thing is just I don't know. This is just an increase in damage. I wish it was like increase in defense or something. Or something would be nice. But this would be pretty bad. The reason why you want her right here specifically. Other than these two notes on the side, this one is pretty good. It increases so that you get 4 SP. The main reason why she's perhaps probably one of the good units to potential. You can pretty much rush the, the middle, get these two right here, rush everything else up to here in the middle node, which is very nice. But you have to get the three on the sides right here in order to unlock this right here is this cooldown reduction by four turns with this four turn cooldown reduction she pretty much can spam her skill so uh, upgrade baby right here with this right here if you unlock the middle one right here it will turn the cooldown right here that four turn cooldown will reduce it to one meaning you can spam this turn one three five seven and nine which is pretty insane but it's just you pretty much can spam it any turn which is I think it's pretty nice you get 4 SP additionally other than that the next one if you're focusing on this fiend hunt probably Anastasia I personally haven't figured out what I need but I'm pretty sure Shh, this is the one, the fire graffiti is probably you might want to be the one investing. The range, I don't I don't think this range is, this range is nice, but it's just the hitbox is not good for the upcoming fiend hunt. But it's just increase in damage, so she would probably be your team 3 DPS maybe. I still haven't got the kick around it, so I have to decide later on. But yeah, her base costume, it's not really that much. It's like cooldown reduction 2 by 2. Uh, let's see. Eh, it's okay. Oh no, this is fire graffiti. Why not? Yeah. It's okay, I guess. That multiplier is very low. Yeah, I think fire graffiti is probably the way to to increase her damage a little bit she'll probably be like a third option but it's just other than that I think there is for PvP focus if you ignore this right here PvP you probably it's between Eclipse what is it where's Seer Yep, Seer, and I think Elenir and Justia is probably pretty good too. Where's Elenir? For Elenir, starting off with Elenir, I think reason why she's 
pretty good. It's not her base. Her base is nothing. Honestly, it's just more, more damage. It's just more damage on her base with two, two CD reduction. It's because of this right here. Her idle form is this one right here. The additional two defense, twenty percent uh, defense reduction. This is pretty much gonna kill um, uh, Gran. It's for certain, Gran's gonna die. Other than that, you have the SP reduction, which is very insane too. Making this skill, basically, making this skill usable for turn one. She can be used for turn one for attacker, so you can do lethal with her now. Lethal with this uh, be idle skill instead of this. Uh, I, yeah, yeah, you can do this. This would certainly kill Graham. Other than that, I think Justia right now with the uh, the bond stats, it's between Kendall or uh, Knights of Blood and I think KOB right, right now in the discord right now for the community I think KOB is probably the best choice in the sense because of the flat damage I mean was it the flat damage is probably better to Kendall's uh, percent I think the flat is like 80 80 uh, flat attack while Kendall's uh fifty two percent, but the thing is that fifty two percent is additive to your other stats, so it's gonna be very it's basically diminished return. So we have to see that when the calculator is uh, fixed by Kane. So yeah, so you can get up to eighty attack right here with light damage always. Perma stats attack on Justias would be pretty nice. White Reaper is gonna be I think a monster, honestly. You, she gets more damage and a cooldown reduction. Basically, this caution right here can be spam like hell. Glutton's okay. I mean, was it other than the fact that she has the same tiles range? She gets an increase from five to nine tiles, which is okay, I guess. She can do fixed damage. I think it's very strong in PvP. But what? What's the point of upgrading this for PvP when PvP barely gives you any rewards? Your priority, in my opinion, should probably be Fiend Hunt, like always. But, you know, you can keep this in mind in case if you want to upgrade Glutton for PvP. I think Justia is probably still strong in PvP. Seer, I expected this already. She, she never... She never has a taunt for her kit, and she needed energy guard to survive. So because of this, they gave her more health with the base, and then with the uh, SP reduction in here. On top of that, sh wow, what the heck? She gets more additional. Okay, so this is the taunt right here, for sure. Yep, taunt. Taunt from her base with damage reduction, which to 95%. I mean, 85%. Wow, okay. And her B idol is probably gonna get the energy guard, energy guard right here. Yep, energy guard. So she's gonna get more energy guard. So she's basically another grand, in a sense, basically. But she doesn't have the uh, priority uh, taunt like grand. So she's gonna be like a, she's just your ordinary taunt, I guess. Eclipse. I don't know on clips. Let me see. So more damage. Okay, that's not bad. Okay, so it's twenty percent now. So reduce enemies twenty. So people need to build their MR by one ten now. I guess it's okay. I mean, I wouldn't. I wouldn't probably upgrade clips. I think it would be a bad choice to upgrade. You're, if you were to go PvP, it's between Eleanor or Justia. Seer's okay, but I think Seer's probably one of the, the units you probably want to put aside and max out later on. Yeah, I think that's about it. Okay, I forgot about, I forgot, almost forgot about mentioning these three right here. I'm not very fan favorite on Dalby. 
I think she's okay. I mean, when magic starts to get better, she'll probably be insane. So with her, with her increase in the uh, potential stats, she'll probably get she'll get a reduction on the SP right here. On top of that, she gets from 160 right here, it'll increase to 190. So she'll get around 30%, which is okay, which is pretty nice, I guess. In that case, yeah. She'll get 15 over here, and another 15 right here, and then one SP. So I think she'll be a decent win unit. I think in the community discord, someone already has her maxed out. So I'll probably look forward to seeing that. Next, we have an Angelica, pretty much Kane's favorite right here. For bond stats, depending right now, it's between... Yeah, actually, there's no in-between. I mean, if you want, you can get the crit rate and crit damage as well with the pool party. But I think out of the best choice right now is pretty much Neon Saber. You get both crit damage and crit... Uh, and like damage so she can pretty much hit very hard she'll be needing less gear but it's gonna cost you to get the nodes itself but it's worth it so you pro you'll probably be skipping these two right here go and go here yeah you're gonna have to end up getting all of them either way you can pretty much skip the HP on the side what was it these two on the sides right here you can skip you can get the uh, was it all these black nodes right here, and then you just need one to unlock. She will probably be your stat pad for your bond for Angelica. While I think pool party just has an increase in damage, so which is very nice. So it's two CD reduction, she gets another two percent and another two percent, which is four four percent more. In her HP percent damage which is very nice she'll be a very friendly uh, uh, for new players to mid game if they want to use her for the full potential which she'll, she'll be super easy to build now now that we have additional like bond stats that you can get free 47% crit damage which is very nice so yeah so neon would would give less crit damage, but the thing is you'll get the light, light damage value, which is very insane. If you value, if you don't care about the crit rate. Now for Sylvia, honestly, without a doubt, after just looking at this, right, definitely for the bond stats right here, it's not Admiral for sure. It's definitely Sword Queen. Uncontestedly, Sword Queen is pretty much the best. I mean, you can have some use in Desert if you want her to tank more or Admiral in like a weird uh, situation for Fiend Hunt where you need more extra defense in case. But Sword Queen is probably one of the best stat pad right now for for bonds, bonding stats for Sylvia. So if you were to get her bond stats right here, you don't need to unlock the big notes at all. So you can avoid unlocking the big notes right here. And you can just focus on the small nodes around the big nodes without using the uh, tier of goddess right here. And once you unlock the small nodes, you can go to info, click bonding stats, and apply that sword queen right there. While her other costumes, I think she just gets oh additional two hits, so she can hit up to seven, seven times, yeah. 4% cooldown reduction, attack, more attack. So Admiral is just more attack and. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, finally, she they finally fixed her 9 turn, so she'll be at least usable. You can cycle her 2 times now, which is going to be very nice for the uh, Fury Tiger when he comes back. She can cycle this twice, which is very good. For her other costume, I wonder. Yeah, it's just more increased attack. So this would be pretty nice. I should probably try to get this unlocked as well when Fury, when that tiger comes back for the Fire Fiend Hunt. Her base, wow. 75% more decrease in damage. And she gets 
2 SP usage and 50% more attack based on her attack so her counter does deals more yeah she's gonna be an absolute monster unless uh, Sherherza will get her uh, potential most likely she will I'm looking forward to Letho and Shaherza's potential. Other than that, potential that I'm probably looking most forward to is Ventana, Diana, and hopefully the three stars, three and four stars will get potential as well. I'm looking forward to see how Aranus, maybe she'll get more crit damage, maybe, I mean, was it crit rate, provide more crit rate or uh, more attack? I'm looking forward to that. The one unit I'm probably not looking forward to is Alec. I mean, I want to see him hit nine tiles as Alec, because I have him. I have one of his skins plus five. I think Swordbreaker is pretty cool, but maybe he'll he'll do nine nine tiles. <laughs> maybe, probably with potential for Alec, he'll probably gonna hit like an additional one more tile or maybe two more tiles. And some cooldown reduction and increase in attack damage. Other than that, uh, that's about it. If you have any question, just come to the Discord and ping me. If not, just com comment below in in this YouTube channel, and I'll try to answer them. The link to the Discord that I'm gonna be uh, around will be down in the description. So yeah, see you there.